I'm joined by Dave Gilbert of Wadget Eyes Games, and we're going to be talking about Unavowed, which is the latest in a long line of uh, point and clicks that he has <laughs> helmed and, and produced. Uh, so, Dave, thank you for taking some time to talk to us. No problem. No problem. Good to be here. Uh, so, for those people who haven't heard about Unavowed, uh, pitch it to them. Um, tell okay, them. I managed to, to, to like shave down the pitch to like one sentence, Ooh. so like really, really, really quick. Um, it's basically an urban fantasy in New York. Uh, basically an urban fantasy about monsters in New York is the quick two second pitch to expand on that. Um, <laughs> it's basically a uh, point and click, click adventure game. It's an urban fantasy, um, where you were possessed by a demon and you've been exercised. Um, and while you were possessed, you did all these horrible, violent, supernatural things in New York. Um, and so you joined this group called the unavowed to kind of, Go around and try to find it, find out what it is that you did and how to set it right. Perfect. Um, so when I saw Unavowed at Play NYC, the thing that really mm -hmm. shined to me is this kind of party mechanic you've incorporated yes. into the game, which I feel like is not something any other point and click I've ever seen or heard of <laughs> has really explored. So can you describe that for, for I people? sure. I mean, I I need to. I keep trying to figure out a better way to describe this without using another game, <laughs> but it's the quickest, easiest way to describe it. It's basically the Bioware narrative structure. It's like it's Dragon Age, it's Mass Effect, it's Nice the Old Republic, where you have a group of companion characters that you can choose to bring out with you into on missions and into the field and stuff. Um, but uh, instead of helping you out in combat situations, they help you uh, solve puzzles different ways. Uh, they all have the various information to share about where you are and what you're doing. And because those are my favorite parts of Bioware games. Mm. And I always thought, well, like, why can't there be a game just based on that? And so that's what I've done. So you've got uh, four companion characters that you can bring out with you and they each have their own ability. Um, there's Eli. He can, he's, he's a fire mage. He can throw fire. There's Mandana. Who's like the swordswoman. There's Vicky. Who's a cop. She's, um, got a gun and she can like talk to police officers for you there's logan who's um if you played blackwell he's a bestower he can talk to ghosts so they each bring something to the table and you can bring two of them out with you and depending who you bring with you puzzle solutions change it's really cool um the thing i really want to learn is how that has evolved over the course of development um okay. was it always four characters is this something <laughs> that you've had to kind of uh, trim back or uh, approach in a different way as you kind of approach the scope of writing yeah. a point-and-click adventure with that many potential narrative branches. Yep. Um, okay, originally there was five companion characters. There was a, a woman called Kali, who, Calliope, who was, a, who was an ancient Egyptian muse who joins you. And her ability was that she could, like, hold anything, like, here's my air conditioner remote, and she'd be able to tell you about its manufacturer, who made it, like, what kind of thought process went into it. Mm. So she, that was kind of her power, and it was kind of a neat idea. But as I was working on the game, and um, as I was, I was realizing that um, I, I can't do the math in my head. I used to have all the, <laughs> the, the exact numbers. But I think with all the five character combinations, there was something like 10 to 12 some odd combinations of like unique paths through each mission. And I'm like, that's that's crazy. I can't do that. And I realized that that would get very overwhelming very fast. So I, I paired it back, and um, I decided that um, whoever you bring with you, you always have to bring one of two characters with you. Eli and Mandana are like the two veterans of the group. They're the when you join up, they're the ones who were there already. Mm. So they've been around for a while. They know everything. So it makes sense to always have them on hand. So you can bring any other character plus them or both of them. And that shrunk it down to like seven or eight paths per mission. Right. But even that was kind of overwhelming. And uh, as I was kind of designing and, and working on the game, I I was struggling to find ways to include Callie. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just I'm just getting rid of her as a companion. She's still in the game. When you play the game, you'll encounter her, and she's fun. But she's not a companion. So that brought it down to five paths. Mm. And even that's a lot, but manageable. <laughs> so um, every time I, I design a mission or a section of the game or a bit of dialogue. I have to write it five different ways, right? Um, which is a lot, and it's ta it's taking time, but it's certainly better than like the twelve or whatever that okay. I originally had several years ago when I conceived of the project. So yeah, I've had to scale things back quite a bit in places. Yeah. Um. So that's a pretty obvious 
major departure from other point and click adventures is this mechanic of of the party. But what are some other things that are different about Unavowed that um, in the way you've approached the story? Oh, or the sure. Universe? Yeah. Well, again, stealing from the best. Uh, Dragon Age Origins does the origin where you choose like where your character came from and you you play a little vignette which shows where your character came from and and how they joined the group. Um, Unavowed has that too. Uh, and it's something I really enjoy doing because um, you have three uh, backgrounds, three careers really. You have police officer, bartender, or, oh my God, actor. And um, depending on which one you chose, you get different conversation options throughout the game. Like the actor can lie very convincingly. Um, the bartender can is very empathetic and can like get information out of someone because they're good at talking. Um, the police officer is more authoritative. Uh, so that changes things throughout the game as well. It changes a lot of dialogue and, and stuff like that. Um, also, a, a big departure from my previous work is that um, there's going to be full voice acting, and there's a lot of it. But the player character is not going to be voiced um, simply because of all the different paths and all the different origins and all the different everything. Um, it was just too much. And also, I really wanted to have the player choose between male or female. So that alone would double the amount of voice acting. So I decided player character not voiced. But that also frees me up because I know I don't have to voice the player character to do all these extra things, which there is a lot of. <laughs> and it also kind of changes the way I write dialogue, too, sure. because um, it's like other character says something and then the player has to choose one of three options. Then the other character replies. So it's a new way of writing dialogue that I'd never had before. And that's been kind of interesting. Cool. Um, well, I hope that that's given people kind of a little bit of a preview of what they can expect with Unavowed and some of the cool features mm -hmm. that sets it apart. Um, moving from Unavowed to your background, I'd love for you to tell us how you kind of got involved in independent game development and specifically why you have gravi uh, gravitated so much sword towards the point and click genre. Oh, um, well, uh, <laughs> I'm about to bum people out. It basically was 9 11. Um, mm -hmm. I was living in New York. I am living in New York still, but I was living in New York then. I was um, alone. I was in between jobs. It happened. And I was looking for a way to keep my mind off stuff. And I'd always been a fan of point-and-click adventure games. I played them as a kid, and I, I still played them, you know, even back then. And I discovered Adventure Game Studio, and uh, I played a few of the games, and I'm like, I could I can make something, you know, using this thing. And I made a little short game in a weekend, and I put it online. And people seem to genuinely like it. And so I, I kept making more just for fun, for free in my spare time. You know, I eventually I got another job. I went back to work and, you know, I just kind of did it for fun. And then uh, about several years later, I think it was 2000. Yeah, it was 2006. I was in another position where I was between jobs. But this time <laughs> I had money saved up. Mm. And I decided, well, you know, I can't. This is what I like doing. It's now or never. If I ever was going to try to make a go of this, now's the time. So I made the Shiva and I made the first Blackwell game. And I just sort of kept it going somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am 11 years later and I'm still doing it. Awesome. Um, well, we're glad you are. Uh, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were some of I the. Like, I like. Paying my mortgage and eating yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Um, so what were some of the games – you said you've always enjoyed point-and-click games. What were some of the ones that kind of stand out in your memory as as inspirations? Oh, gosh. Um, or or yeah. not even just point-and-click games, but any any games. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean I love uh, Nice Sealed Repu nice Sealed Republic I always feel is like the gold standard of mm. like how to deliver a twist, how to like handle story and characters. It's so great. Um Gabriel Knight, of course, that's a huge inspiration. Um, I was really inspired, weirdly enough, by Discworld Noir, which hmm. is very dated and it's impossible to get running now. But like the detective mechanic of yeah. like taking notes and combining notes, um, I loved that mechanic and I stole it for Blackwell. <laughs> um, so that those were big inspirations. I take a lot of my inspirations actually from like books I've read or authors I like or like movies or television shows that I enjoy. Um, it's hard to take inspiration from like from games per se because like the newer games I can never make those games because they're new and they have bigger budgets. Mm -hmm. And the old games are old and kind of dated. And uh, I don't want to just ape the classics. I want to do my own thing. Sure. So I kind of get inspired by the types of stories I like and the types of 
characters I like. I, I kind of pull from my own life experience and that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, uh, it's from a variety of, of places. Fantastic. And are there any other indie titles out there right now, either mm-hmm. in production or have recently come out, that have really stood out to you that, as a developer, you think do something really spectacular that you'd like to shine a light on? Uh, let's see. Uh, I recently played through Franbo, mm. which is one of the more like unique, like traditional point and click adventure games I played in a very, very long time. Um, they did something really, really special. Um, what else have I played uh, indie wise lately? Um, I've been playing through Divinity: Original Sin two. I don't know if that's indie or not. There's uh, a, there's a there's a discussion there, but I've put enough hours a great line. into it that I'll <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> I am enjoying that a lot. They mm. do some really cool things. Um, what else? Uh, God, you know, I don't play games anymore. <laughs> um, I, I, I I bought Thomistry, the Bob Bates game, mm. and that's something I'm going to be playing soon. Um, it looks fun. I don't know if it is yet, but it's something I bought and I'm looking forward to. Big Infocom fan from way back. Um, yeah, I can't really think of anything else. No, that's, right. those are some great selections. <laughs> I'm losing my indie cred. I don't even know what's out there anymore. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, well, awesome. Dave, thanks for sharing a little bit about the background of Unavowed sure. and about your own background. Uh, so there'll be links in the description below for all the stuff you could possibly want to read about on the map. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you.